just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, oh Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you, oh Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, I just want to praise you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, oh Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, I just want to thank you. Amen, amen, let us worship him. Eternal Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our strength and our Redeemer. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day in the land of the living. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for life, for health, for strength, food on our tables, clothes on our backs, shoes on our feet. Father, you have put air in our lungs one more time. You've put sight in our eyes, hearing in our ears. We, we, we give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. You alone are worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. We reverence you. We laud and magnify your holy name. There is none like you, Heavenly Father, in the heavens or any earth or underneath the earth. We just appreciate you so much, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father, today for loving us, your little children, in spite of our flaws, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our sins and our iniquities. You still love us. You still have a place prepared for us. You are still leading and guiding us in your paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, we, we, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not give you all the glory, all the honor that you deserve. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being who you are. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for doing what you do. Father, again, we come before you and ask that you forgive us, your little children, of our sins and iniquities which we have grievously committed knowingly at times other times unknowingly father we ask for your mercy and help us heavenly father to extend your mercy upon those who have sinned against us it would be the height of hypocrisy for us to ask you for mercy for the sins that we commit against you and then not extend that same mercy to those who who sin against us help us heavenly father to be perfect as you are perfect father we pray as we study your holy scripture today that your spirit will speak to us through us and for us may no words of flesh leave these mortal bodies but may we speak as we are carried along and unctioned by your Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Father. Speak through us and speak for us. That your people in the four corners of the earth, hearing these words of yours, may be edified, strengthened, encouraged, uplifted. And may your name, Father, which is above every other name, gain all glory honor and praise father we are trusting you are going to do these things for us your little children as we come together touching and agreeing asking in the name of jesus christ our lord these and all other blessings we ask in jesus most precious name 
And God's people say amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, children of God. I greet each of you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ. For those of you worshiping with us for the first time, I am Apostle Robert Bryant, pastor of the Christian Center Church Worldwide headquarters here in Kinston, North Carolina, USA. And I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Living the Word, a place where sound doctrine is brought to the ears of millions of God's people all over the world. We do praise God for each of you. We pray the Lord is blessing you very well wherever this broadcast is locating you. For those of you that have been worshiping with us, you know that we are working on our current topic, Who Can Hide in Secret Places? This is the question that, 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 that was asked in, in one of our scriptures. And the reality is, my brother and my sister, nobody. We can't hide anything from God. Listen, God knew everything about you and everything about me before he ever formed us in our mother's womb. God knew what color you were going to be. God knew what continent you were going to live on. God knew whether you were going to be saved or whether you were not. God knew everything about us before he even formed us. The next word that is about to come out of my mouth, God said, Robert, I already know it. God says, I always knew it. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So listen to me, my brother. Listen to me, my sister. You and I are living out God's memory. Let me say that again. What is getting ready to happen to us, what we are getting ready to do, what we are planning to do, what we are looking forward to doing, it's a part of God's memory. God already God already remembers what we are planning to do. What a mighty God we serve. Nothing surprises him. Nothing shocks him. The way the Lord gave it to me like this many years ago, children of God. Lord asked me, he said, Robert, have you ever seen a rerun? Now, a rerun is a program that comes on television that has already what? It has already come on before. I said, sure, Lord. Yeah, of course. I, You know, I watch reruns every day. And God said, Robert, you don't worry about how the rerun is going to turn out, do you? I said, no, Lord, of course not. He said, why? God said, I told Lord, I said, Lord, because I've already seen it before. God said, Robert, tell my people I have already seen eternity before. Now, to us, tomorrow is the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. God already knows. To us, 10 years from now is the unknown. We don't know what's going to be going on. With us. God already knows. And one thing God has said and promised to you and to me, children of God, is that all things work together for good. For those who love the Lord and have been called according to his purpose. So I want to encourage you, my brother, encourage you, my sister. Take it easy. Relax yourself. Some of us are anxious. Some of us are worried. Some of us are nervous. Relax yourself. Whatever we go through, whatever we experience, whatever we pass through, all we have to do is make sure we love the Lord and make sure that we have been called according to his purpose. And God has promised that it's going to work together for our good. Bless the Lord. For those of you that have been worshiping with us, you know we've been working on our current topic. Who can hide in secret places? As we have discussed, children of God, none of us. We can't hide anything from God. God knows what we like. God knows what we don't like. God knows what's in our heart. God knows what's in our mind. God knows what, what we plan. God, God, we can't hide anything from God. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 7 with a special focus on verse 11. Exodus chapter 7 verse 11. Scripture says, Pharaoh 
then summoned wise men and sorcerers and the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts we are continuing our topic who can hide in secret places let's pray father in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior our strength and our Redeemer speak father your servants your children your people are listening in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. As we examine the book of Exodus, chapter 7, children of God, we are seeing a very important time in Israel's history. God was in the process of revealing himself both to his people and to his enemies understand that God is going to reveal himself at the appointed time to his friends or his people and to his enemies those who don't believe in him those who don't uh, don't want to do what he says those who are against him. God is going to reveal himself to both groups don't listen some of you all out there worried about the wicked prospering and worried about you know, things that don't listen, don't worry, my brother and my sister. God has everything under control. And at the appointed time, our God is going to reveal himself to his friends as well as to his enemies. Understand, my brother or my sister, that each one of us today is in one of those two categories. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, whatever country, whatever nation, whatever kindred, whatever tongue, you are either God's friend or you are God's enemy. Right now, wherever you are, what you are thinking right now, what you are doing right now, what you are purposing, planning, it is either friendship to God or enemy of God. My prayer for each one of us at the end of the day may we be found to be what friends of god god is going to reveal himself to his friends just like jesus when he rose from the dead he revealed himself to his friends now to his enemies that god is going to reveal himself it may be a little bit down the road Listen, my brother, listen, my sister. People in hell right now, they know God is real. Some of them know God is real even even more so than you and I. They know. People, said, listen, there are some people that were stone atheists yesterday. Died last night, woke up in hell. They are stone believers now. Stone believers now. But it's too late. You say, Apostle, what are you letting us know? The reason why I'm here and other apostles all over the world, other prophets, other evangelists, other pastors, other teachers, is to try to get some of you all to know before you have to end up in hell. You want to know that Jesus Christ is Lord before you end up in hell. You want to know that God is real before you end up in hell. You want God to, to be your friend before you have to end up in hell because he was your enemy or because you were an enemy to him. So my prayer for each one of us, may we get to know the truth about God before it's too late. See, some of you under the sound of my voice, you don't understand the passion that some of us have in telling people and going throughout the world and sharing this gospel. Some of you don't understand it because God has not revealed himself to a certain degree in your life. When God revealed, listen, if people that are in hell right now could come back to the earth you would have some of the greatest evangelists 
you would have some of the greatest uh, preachers. You would have people preaching with a passion and because they would have a knowledge that not many people have. Because they've been to hell, they have experienced, they have seen, now they know the truth, and that some of them will be some of the greatest preachers in this generation. If they could come back. The problem is they cannot come back. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. My prayer for every soul under the sound of my voice is that you will stop whatever you're doing and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten son, that he lived, bled, suffered, and died for my sin, and that on the third day you raised him from the dead. If you do that, my brother, and you do that, my sister, the Bible says you shall be saved. If we confess Romans 8, 9, and 10. If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus and that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Well, children of God, as we take a look at our Select scriptures for the day. Exodus chapter 7. And we're going to go down to verses 8 through 13 now. Um, very important time in the nation of Israel's history. Uh, now, understand this now, my brother, understand this, my sister. Oftentimes, God will start his things out with miracles. You see miracles, a lot of miracles in the early church. You see the beginning of Moses' ministry, miracles, you know, snakes turning in, uh, 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 staffs turning into snakes and and, you know, you, you, you know, oftentimes God will do the miracles and, and, and start things off with miracles. So the people will be convinced and they'll, they'll know that God is not joking around. God is not, not, not playing around. That God's power is the greatest power. Well, in... Exodus chapter 7 verse 8 the scripture says the Lord said to Moses and Aaron now I understand my brother and Lord is won't even let me go any further without dealing with that this is the most important aspect of our ministry the Lord said to us a lot of times people ask me Apostle Brian well why did why you decide to you know to leave your profession and start preaching and teaching God's what the Lord said to me. If the Lord has not said to you or the Lord has not said to me, then we don't need to we don't need to say anything. If the Lord has not said to us to do, we don't need to do anything. If the Lord has not said to us to go, we do not need to go anywhere. The reason why Moses and Aaron were doing what they were doing, not they were not just trying to make a name for themselves. They were not just trying to be popular. They were not just trying to be seen. They were doing what they were doing. Why? The Lord said 
to Moses and Abram. I pray for every soul under the sound of my voice. May we get in the habit of moving, grooving, doing, going, because the Lord said to us, that is my prayer for you, that is my prayer for me, that we will do what we are doing because the Lord said to us. See, this is where God wants you, this is where God wants me. He wants us moving because we have heard the voice of God in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. We've heard God. We heard God say, give this. We heard God say, do that. We heard God in us say, stop doing that right there. We hear, we heard God. The Bible says, the Lord said to Moses and Abraham, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff, throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. In other words, you know, there will be some proof that you are being sent by God. God always gives his servants proof that he has sent them. Just remember that. that there will always be proof. Now, the Lord is dealing with me in my spirit in regards to this. You and I must be sensitive so that we do not overlook the proof. See, now, 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 now. In other words, Moses and Aaron were sent by God. God gave Moses and Aaron miraculous powers for you to take and throw a staff down and it turn into a snake that's pretty miraculous that's out of the ordinary that was the proof right there but Pharaoh because of his hard heart, because of his stiff neck, because of because of the problems in him, he did not want to accept even the miracle that God sent through his servants. My prayer for you, my prayer for me, may we not be that stubborn. When when we discern that God has worked a miracle through one of his servants, may we accept that miracle and make the necessary adjustments. You say, Pharaoh, look right at a miracle from God. You don't see snakes turn, you don't see sticks turning into snakes. I have a stick right here. Now, if I throw this stick down on the ground and it turn into a snake, you, you, something is going on. Hmm? Don't overlook God's miracles. Because oftentimes what God will do when we overlook his miracles is God will cut down on the miracles that you and I see. See, there are a whole lot of miracles in the wilderness that Pharaoh didn't get to see. He saw the miracles that, you know, he saw some miracles and some plagues and some and, and different things, you know, but but there were miracles all out in the wilderness. Pharaoh didn't get to see water come out of the rock. Pharaoh didn't get to see uh, uh, manna and quail come down in the camp. Pharaoh didn't get to see. He didn't get to see. So when we don't accept God's miracles, God will cut short the miracles. May that not be your portion. May that not be my portion in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Now, Bible says in verse 10, we're not going to be long this morning, children of God. Moses and Aaron, verse 10, they went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Now, understand that that part of the requirement for any miracle from God is that you and I do just what the Lord commanded. I've seen the Lord raise the dead. I've seen the Lord heal the sick. I've seen the Lord, but it came as a result of doing just as the Lord commanded. In other words, following instructions very well. You and I want things from God. We have to get in the habit of following instructions very well. Let's get that down. Keep that in mind. You know, we want breakthrough. We want we want miracle. We want financial. Follow the instructions. See, sometimes we can't get our miracle. We can't get our breakthrough. We can't get our healing. We can't get, you know, name it. He almost missed out on his healing because he didn't want to follow God's instructions. He almost missed out on his miracle. He didn't want to follow God's instruction. People that receive a lot of miracles, a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of they follow God's instructions very well. Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what? Just as the Lord commanded. They didn't veer to the left. They didn't veer to the right. Lord, help us. And to keep from veering to the left and veering to the right and missing your your miracle, missing your breakthrough. My spirit goes to my three on three team that I played with years ago. Oftentimes we would have basketball games or tournaments up New York, New Jersey, and it would be four of us, and we would take. Uh, turns driving you know maybe one of us if it was a, a 10 hour trip we say all right everybody drive uh two hours you know two and a half hours and uh sometime while one would drive the others would sleep and i remember you know because i i'm from the new york new jersey area but my teammates were they were guys that were from down here in North Carolina, so they weren't very familiar with that area. And I, sometimes when we would be driving, I would be driving, then I'd say, all right, I'm getting ready to turn over the vehicle for somebody else to drive. And I would tell one of the other teammates, look, just stay on Interstate 95 North. Don't turn off. Don't take an exit. I go to sleep. Sometimes I wake up and they have they on their way to California. Why? What has happened? They have veered off to the left. They have veered off somewhere. I said, look, man, didn't I tell you to stay on 95? Oh, I thought that. And no thought. Just stay on 95. Well, what God is saying to you and what God is saying to me, do just what I command. I don't need you to veer off to the left. I don't need you to veer off. To the right, I don't need what you think. I don't need what you believe. I don't need how it looks like to you. Just do as the Lord, what? Command. Bible said they did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Now, understand this, my brother, understand this, my sister. Put this down and get it down in your notes. Draw right hard with your pen, because this is something you need to remember. That staff that Moses and Aaron had, it became a snake. God said, Robert, in my spirit, I'm like, yes, Lord. God said, tell my people it could have become anything I wanted it to become. I just turned it into a snake. God said, I could have turned it into a condominium, Robert. I could have turned it into an elephant. I could have turned it into an eagle. God, listen, and, and understand this about yourself, child of God. God can turn you into anything he wants you to be. God can turn me into anything he wants me to be. Yeah, you might be working at at the, 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 the uh, 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 a gas station or a service station. Now, God can turn you into a doctor. 
that is one thing I love about many of our African brothers and sisters when they come over here to the United States. When they are fortunate enough to get a visa or fortunate enough to come to this country, many times, many of them may have been very, very poor or did not have very much when they were in Africa come to the United States with all the opportunities and all of the uh, and become doctors or become I have a, a, a great man of God that's a doctor Nigerian doctor right here in town they take advantage they become all kinds of things over here in this great country whereas many of us as African Americans right here in this country been blessed to be in this country and acting like fools and not taking advantage of what this great country has to offer my prayer for us as african americans may we take advantage of this great country and what it has available many of our african brothers and sisters come over here they, they, they that know how difficult it is in many parts of africa come over here and be like what you mean I can be this, I can do this, I can do, and do all kinds of things. And we still over here as African Americans acting like complete fools, many of us. Lord help us. A staff became a snake. God turned a stick into a snake. Don't you know God can turn a pimp? into a pastor don't you know god can turn a, a a fool into an apostle god if god can turn a stick into a snake he can turn you into anything he wants you to be so child of god don't be thinking that our god is limited he can do anything he what wants to do with you to you through you we're about to down children of god we're gonna wrap this message up soon thank you holy spirit the bible says pharaoh now 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 god said robert deal with that for a moment before you go on pharaoh should have took this miracle and said, okay, yes, Lord, I'll let the people go. Whatever you want, Lord, you know. He, This miracle should have, listen, if this miracle would have convinced Pharaoh, his country may have been allowed to remain intact. As a result, because he rejected it and kept trying to come against God. See, and I preached this some time ago, children of God. Two different Pharaohs. The Pharaoh in Moses' day was a fool. He kept trying to fight against God, kept trying to fight against God's program, tried to fight against what God was trying to do. The Pharaoh in Joseph's day was a wise man. Two types of pharaohs, one a fool and the other a wise man. You had two types of sons, well, some, one that's a fool, one that's a wise man. You had two types of daughters, two types of husbands, two types of pastors. Two, is two, listen, put this down. There are two types of most anything in this life. There are two types. This Pharaoh was a fool. You say, Apostle, why? Because he tried to fight against God's program instead of trying to get with God's program. I don't know who God has sent me here to prophesy to, but if you're out there trying to fight against God's program, you're a fool. We need to get with God's program. Listen. God's program is going to roll with or without you and with or without me. God's program is going to roll. So we want to get with God's program. We want to be, listen, we want to be a part of God's program. 
if God's program is going that way, it will be foolish of us to try to come the opposite way. If God's program is going that way, then that's the way I want to be going. Because in God's program, that's where we're going to find the blessings. In God's program, that's where we're going to find the miracles. In God's program, that's where we're going to find, that's where the good things are going in the God, God's program. My prayer for you, my prayer for me, may we, be a, may we be in God's program and not be against what? God's program. This Pharaoh was a fool because he tried to come against God's program. If you and I are trying to come against God's program, we too are being foolish. Right today. Now, some of you on the sound of my voice, you know, now you have searched the scriptures. I share with you all Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 46. The early saints, how they devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine. Some of you under the sound of my voice, you don't want to devote yourself to the apostles' doctrine. And that, strike, that strike one against you right there. You are already missing out on the blessings, many blessings that God has for you, many good things that God does. If you don't want to devote yourself, if you don't want to put yourself under the apostles' doctrine, you already are asking for problems out of God. They devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to fellowship. That's the second thing. We got the fellowship as children of God. Breaking of bread and prayer. And they did this every day. Now, you don't want to do that. You are asking for beatings from God. You are asking to miss blessings from God. Two things we don't want from God. We don't want beatings from God. And we don't want to miss blessings from God. Them two things we don't want from God. Pharaoh had the wrong answer. He had the wrong answer to the request, the demand of God. He had the wrong answer to the miracle of God. He just had the wrong answer. Listen, wrong answers can get you and I killed. Wrong answers can get you and I sent to hell. Pharaoh had wrong answer. He heard the request of God. He saw the miraculous power of God. Could have saved his nation. Could have saved his people. Could have saved his army, his chariots. Wrong answer. Caused him to lose a lot. Made a wrong answer. May you and I uh, not have the wrong answer. So that it didn't have to cost us. Bible says Pharaoh then summoned the wise men and sorcerers and the Egyptian magician the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts. Well, you know, I know the Bible says that they did the same things by their secret art, but they didn't really do the same thing. In, in other words, what God was doing and what God was saying had a power behind it that Pharaoh, his magicians, his sorcerers, they didn't really have. I know it looked the same. Now that's that's more in line with what the scripture is saying. It looked the same because they threw down their staffs and it, they became snakes too. So it looked pretty much the what? Same, just like the adversary. He's he's doing a whole lot of stuff that looks a lot like God. Listen, we don't want to look a lot like God. We want to be a lot like God. 
We don't want to look like Christians. We want to be Christian. We don't want to look saved. We want to be saved. We don't want to look necessarily look right. We want to be right. Pharaoh and his officials did the same thing, and they they staff turned into snakes too. But look at what the Bible says, and we're about to close this message. But Aaron's staff did what? Aaron's staff did what? Verse 12. Aaron's staff did what? Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Now that is God's way of letting us know that God's power is going to eventually swallow up all the powers, all lesser powers. Because at the end of the day, all power comes from God anyway. Aaron's staff, which was God, which was symbolic of God's staff or God's snake, it swallowed up their staff, which was symbolic of uh, satanic or demonic. Listen, God is all powerful. Satan has some power. Men and women have some power. Governments have some power. My spirit is going to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king had power to throw them into the fiery furnace, but the king didn't have power to make them burn up. God showed you got power to throw them in the fiery furnace or 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 for them to fall into the fiery furnace because that's actually what happened. But God said you don't have power to burn them up. God, you know, God will always show the limits of Satan's power and and demons' power and different things. It, the Egyptian magicians and sorcerers, they had power to turn their staffs into snakes too. But they didn't have power for their staffs or their snakes to swallow up Aaron's staff, Aaron's snake. They had power to turn them into snakes, but they didn't have power to swallow up Aaron's. Satan has power. Satan's sons, Satan's daughters, magicians, sorcerers. These, these, listen, these groups have power, but these groups don't have power over God's what? Power. We're going to close this message, children of God. But the Bible said, now here was the mistake of Pharaoh. Verse 13, and we're going to close right here. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard. In other words, even though God showed him what was really going on god showed him how things were really working he he didn't believe it. my prayer for you my prayer for me may our hearts not be hardened in other words we not gonna believe even though we have seen even though we have witnessed god's power even though we know that that god <sighs> Pharaoh's heart became hard. We don't listen. My prayer for each of us, may our hearts not become hard, but may our hearts become softer. A hard heart will lead to a hard head, will lead to a butt whooping. A soft heart will lead, lead to to will lead to the blessings of God. We're going to close, children of God. Pharaoh's heart became hard. 
and he would not listen to them. Understand when someone is speaking for God and you don't listen to them, you don't listen to God. Now you think you're just not listening to him or her or them or they. When you don't listen to someone that is speaking for God and they are really speaking for God, you are not listening to God. Now, some of you under the sound of my voice, you decided you're not going to listen. You're not going to listen to the broadcast. You're not going to listen. Well, you know, Apostle Brian, always talking for God. Always, and, and, and yet in your heart, you know that I'm talking for God and you've decided that you're not going to listen. Then what you have done in your heart is you've decided that you're not going to listen to God. My prayer for you, my prayer for me, may we make the decision to listen to God as much as we possibly can and to obey God as much as we possibly can in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ. Listening to God leads to blessings. Not listening to God leads to beatings. Lord knows this thing is very simple, my brother and my sister. May God bless each of you. May heaven continue to smile on you. Saints, you can reach us through email at https colon forward slash forward slash thadfg.wixsite.com forward slash tcccww or on cash app dollar sign apostle brian 2000 feel free to join us on talk shoe facebook youtube and itunes daily on facebook join us on robert guy bryant the fourth on youtube join us on the christian center church channel we can even be reached by phone at plus two five two five two five four seven 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 Donations should be sent by using the donation button on TalkShoe, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, or on the Cash App application, dollar sign, Apostle Brian 2000. God bless you and heaven smile on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we want to recognize Pastor Pathuri. We want to recognize Pastor Pathuri. Bishop Ruel. Bishop. Bishop Bruel, Monrovia, Liberia. Uh, Pastor Shimei. Pastor Shimei. Uh, Minister Elizabeth Nikwe from Accra, Ghana. Minister El Elizabeth Nikwe from Accra, Ghana. Accra, Ghana. Uh, Pastor Sohail from Pakistan. Pastor Sohail from Pakistan.